Is it for me? It's for everyone. It's called Amazon Echo. How's it going? Uh, I'm just finishing up right now. Can it hear me right now? Uh, yes. Nope. Here's when you use the wake word we chose. Alexa. Well, what does it do? Alexa, what do you do? I can play music, help you buy things you don't need, and fill the gaping hole that you call your life. Awesome. Huh. Alexa, play rock music. Alexa, stop. Wait, I want to try. Alexa, what happens when GnRH binds to its receptor in terms of calcium and LH release from the pituitary? Okay, great question. Here is what I found. GnRH is a peptide hormone composed of 10 amino acids. It is released from neurons in the hypothalamus, travels through the portal system, and binds to seven transmembrane domain receptors on gonadotrophs in the anterior pituitary. The now activated receptor exchanges a GDP for a GTP on the G protein alpha subunit, which is then released from the receptor ligand complex and activates phospholipase C. Phospholipase C breaks down PIP2 into diacylglycerol and IP3. IP3 binds to receptors on the endoplasmic reticulum and releases intracellular calcium into the cytoplasm. This initial spike in calcium concentration initiates calcium transients that hyperpolarize the plasma membrane triggering voltage-gated calcium channels. Once these channels are opened extracellular calcium flows into the cell and maintains calcium signaling during GnRH stimulation. Elevated calcium concentrations trigger secretory vesicles to fuse with the plasma membrane and release gonadotropins like luteinizing hormone. Diacylglycerol from the phospholipase C reaction, and elevated calcium concentrations activated protein kinase C which is an important step in two different pathways that turn into transcription factors that control biosynthesis of gonadotropins. Huh. Alexa knows a lot about endocrinology. Of course I do. I am smarter than all of you and endocrinology is important.